Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. We're back on this uh, 37 Studebaker truck rear fender, and we're just doing an experiment here just as the, for educational purposes. I'm going to make this out of, we actually started out of 16 gauge uh, aluminum, but a lot of people want to see some steel work, so we did this fender section out of 20 gauge steel using the what I call the YouTube English wheel which you can buy the plans for on my website and all the mechanism is just about done I'm waiting for one more thing and I thought it was going to be this week but it looks like it's going to be next week this was all done with that English wheel we wheeled the whole thing there was no shrinking there was no malleting or anything it was just purely English wheel and we made it so that this was the primary piece and this was the secondary piece here which was the the flat section that's going to go underneath the body and it bolts up through the body here so it, that possibly could have been done in a different way too instead of having this strip over here we could have done a little strip like right here and then brought it over this way and now we would have had a weld in a little bit of a curve here which we could easily have handled but that's just another way of, of uh, doing it using all stretching and when we cut it in half we found out that what was formerly a 35 thousandths uh, thick panel at the point of the most stretching which was all done on the wheel it went down to 28 thousandths, so the loss was uh, 7 thousandths of an inch total. So uh, the other feature about this panel was that from here on up, I welded with a MIG, and from here down, I welded with a very inexpensive uh, $300 DC only, no aluminum welding TIG. And the TIG weld definitely came out better than the MIG weld, but the MIG weld was okay. I had a little uh, screw up right here and probably was my fault and um, whenever you do any welding on YouTube you get a lot of feedback comments and I got a, a really uh, good feedback comment on this from uh, one of my uh, viewers Boone Lipsy who's also on my Facebook uh, feed and I see his name quite a bit I don't know that much about him but uh, he made a really good uh, comment about how he MIG welds and I thought it was worth repeating and I don't MIG weld other than structural stuff I don't MIG weld for sheet metal work but uh, a good segment of the restoration hobby uh, that's their welding tool is a MIG welder I'm trying to get people to convert to a TIG welder but it's a, it's a tough battle and uh, people get set in their ways and they're going to be a MIG welder and they're going to stay with it and it works for them uh, but generally I like to try to do the work so you don't have to put fillers on and uh, you can do a much higher quality I believe with a TIG but um, to be practical about it and what I, that's what appealed to me about uh, Boone's comment was that what he does to ensure against cracking and all kinds of problems and I think it's worth trying I haven't tried it myself but it registered right away with me is that he'll maybe tack this together with the MIG and the MIG tacking is very very simple and then he, he'll, he'll stitch weld it so he does about three quarters of an inch or an inch from what I understand from his description and then as soon as he welds that one inch right away he starts grinding and if it needs a little hammering I think he's doing a little bit of a hammering on it too to settle the panel and stuff and um, typically what happens with the MIG is that you put the heat in and the weld is so fast that um, you're getting a rapid cooling just because it radiates out real fast and, and cools off and a lot of accepted practice is they're actually accelerating that cooling by taking an air gun or a spritzer of water and cooling it even more so uh, and what one problem of that is is when you're heat treating steel is that the rapid cooling is what you want to create uh, uh, a more a harder condition and I think what's happening is 
one of the uh, critiques of MIG welding is the, the weld bead is uh, harder than the parent metal and is prone to cracking because of that because it cools so fast and uh, when you're cooling it uh, you're, you're trying to lessen the distortion from the heat affected zone which is probably effective but you also can potentially create a problem where that the weld will grind harder and that metal in the weld zone is going to be a little harder than the parent metal. With Boone's uh, method, he is getting the initial heat from the MIG welding, but then he is grinding it right away, and the grinding creates that friction heat. So you get a slow, uh, cool situation rather than that rapid cool situation. And then what he does is he'll do I think three quarters to an inch and get that work down and I suppose if it moves a little bit on him he'll give it a little tap with uh, the hammer or whatever but generally he says he does this when he doesn't have access to the back of the panel too. I didn't forget, uh, forgot to mention that and that's the real practical part of it. A lot of time home restorers or it depends on the project. If the car is not worth hundreds of thousands of dollars or eighty thousand dollars, you might not want to take a whole quarter panel off to repair a little rust spot, and you might have to take three hundred spot wells out in order to get that one little rust spot fixed. So you make a little patch panel and you MIG weld it in with no access to the back side. And what Boone is doing, like I said, was doing that little one inch and then grinding it right away and um, then he'll take and start another inch but he starts the other inch overlapping on the inch that he already did and then he does it again over here and each time he grinds and that just makes a lot of sense to me I haven't tried it but I'm almost positive that he's right that it, it's an improvement and it works really good so you might want to try that out so that's all I gotta say about that MIG welding. It's a very nice method of, of doing a lot of the restoration work. But as Boone said also, when he does have access on the backside, he generally use a TIG. And he, he agreed that the TIG welder is a better deal than the MIG welder. But it's about being practical too. So some pretty good advice there from Boone Lipsy. Um, so here we are on this panel and what I want to do now is make, we'll do the exact same panel, we'll come up to the same uh, rung here on the uh, wire form, which is the wires about right here, we'll come a little bit past it. And instead of making the panel in two pieces and, and stretching the whole panel, what we're going to do is both stretch and shrink and we'll make it all one piece. And we'll do it with the YouTube English wheel, you can see how it performs using that method also and um, we won't have any welding to do on that panel it'll be all uh, shaped for the full full amount we'll do it out of 20 gauge and then after we're done with that panel we'll cut it in exactly the same spot and we'll see the differences in the thicknesses it should be a little thicker on the edges if I shrink on both edges and a little thinner in the center but be less uh, less stretching will happen here because we gain so much on the, of the developing the shape by shrinking the edges. So first off we're going to do is we're going to make a paper pattern. So I'll get the paper all set up and I'll show you what I do there. All right, I have some paper on here now. This is just really flimsy brown paper. I think it's about four or five thousand thick. And uh, this one I didn't put any slits in it so I won't have to tape it up or anything. So what I'm going to do is just run on the wires, and this is the beautiful thing about the wire form. Boom! Magnet holds it right there, no problem. All right, there I have it uh, all outlined. I just put some wrinkles in here, got it all attached with the magnets. Pull all the magnets off. Let's mark it top so we know where we're at here. This is top. And this is uh, inboard. Out. Now as you can see, uh, this is where all the shrinking is going to have to take place, right here. Now I've seen some, a lot of the power hammer guys, they'll, 
they'll um, orient the panel right from the from the start here like this way and they'll shrink all this part that's another way of doing it there's half a dozen different ways you can make these panels all right there's my rough blank and now I'm gonna cut that out of 20 gauge and leave a lot of extra every which way uh, so I have some cheat factor there and I need the extra for the wide edge and the flanges and all that all right, we've got our blank. Uh, we rough cut it out with a lot of extra, probably more extra than we need, but uh, it'll work out fine. We'll cut it down a couple times. So I'll put it about right here. I'll do a perimeter mark around the, the pattern. And Let's mark this again over here. It's right about here. That's where the curve is going from here to here. It curves from here, from this outer edge into here, and this is pretty much flat right here. So we're gonna bring some shrinks in like this, some deep shrinks. Most of them are gonna be needed up here, less and less over here. So um, actually I probably don't need to come that far. We'll come in just a little bit on this bottom section here. And let's see, we'll do one, two. So a deep one, or uh, less deep, deep, less deep. This one now, and less deep. So we'll put those shrinks in and we're going to do those on my gathering tool. I need some WD on this. got our initial uh, gathers in there and we get went in uh, almost the full distance that we needed and this will be the first we we'll probably do about three rounds or so of, of gathers and then we have this is my big shrinking facilitator here uh, this is a larger panel so I'll put it in here you want to go in the deeper section and uh, if you haven't seen these shrinking facilitators before all it is is uh, Home Depot or your local lumber company, if there's anything such thing as a local lumber company anymore, because Home Depot's sort of taken that whole uh, lumber segment over. And you just go there and get some 2x8s or 2x10s. You cut them up with a jigsaw or a bandsaw, and that means, that means you don't have to hog all, all that stuff out with a, a chainsaw like you would do a stump and uh, that's just common everyday construction lumber and then you put this coating on which is a roofing coating which you can buy you used to be able to get it at home depot for some reason i haven't been able to, i haven't seen it in my local home depot uh, recently but uh, if you have a roofing supply company nearby they definitely will sell this this is called epdm rubber and you want the one that's about a sixteenth of an inch thick it's super stretchy and it has an incredible adhesive on it so it will conform to any shape and when I first tried putting these on I thought it would only last 
a little while and then I'd have to put another coat on it. But these are at least three years old and they've gone through a lot of classes and they get abused like crazy. And um, not only does it protect the wood, but it actually holds the the uh, panel in there and what a shrinking facilitator does is it facilitates the shrinking process. It's a hammer form in a sense too. It's a, uh, a internal hammer form. So we're going to put that here. This is the deep spot. That's we always want to use that deep spot and we want to put this right where the gathers are right on the edge of that deep spot and ideally if we have air space or air gap underneath of it it will do its job better. So when you're hammering it megaphones back at you so you best to have ear protection. So I use these muffs. We use one of our hammers. These are nice uh, Delrin head hammers. They've got a lot of mass to them and I should have a glove on. Let me get a glove. You can pace yourself to get your heart beating doing this, but each, each hammer blow is just a lift and snap. And that's what you want to see, that spine all the way. One more to go. So that's one, two, five shrinks. Now that was a little steep, so we're going to open that up a little bit. <clears throat> See how steep that's getting? Bring that up on the flat here. And we'll coax it open a little bit. There we go. So what we did with that is now we're here. Now you might say, oh, maybe we could shrink up here, but we don't really want to shrink that. That'll all come by more shrinking right here. So we'll knock these down a little bit. Let's see what we got. With just a few little shrinks, we got that much rise in the panel. Five shrinks. There's no stretching at all yet. That's all shrinking. And it's not fancy equipment. It's just some two by eights and a nice hammer. Now we'll do a little stretching. We'll stretch right at the ends of these shrinks here. We'll do the stretching right here in the sh uh, shrinking facilitator. Now watch what happens when I do this. See that? Spontaneous. So that's begging to be shrunk again. It reactivated. careful because it go, it'll it'll walk over on you so you got to pay really good attention to it. Let me crunch that down because it's getting in the danger, danger zone. Let's try some more here.
every hammer blow, you want to watch what's going on over here. We don't want to gather these. We let those go. All right, so let's see what we got now. That's just a few minutes. Pretty good results. Now what we'll do is we'll crunch these down real hard. For that, I use a, a flat top stump we got over here. I prefer the metal hammer to really crunch these down good. All right, now what we'll do, I got them all crunched down. I'll wipe all the dust off and we'll put it in the wheel and smooth it a little bit and see where we're at. All right, now we got it in the wheel and we'll smooth this all out and do an assessment. So my goal here is just to settle all the, the, the whole panel down, just smoothing out all the lumps and bumps. It doesn't really matter what the panel looks like at this point. Just want to get it smooth. Now what I want to do is change the arrangement on the panel so I can wheel the long way. So I'll take this panel and I'll open this up this way and I'll put the curl going the other way. Yeah. Now Crunch this all down here. Now I'm lifting up a little bit as I pull through over here. I just want to straighten that end out. I'm lifting up again. Taking the curl out now.
Doing a little 45 to settle that back edge in. Whenever you see a loose edge with a wave in it, you 45 inboard and you'll get that wave out of the way real fast. Top up here. All right, let's see what we have. Five shrinks and a few minutes of wheeling, and we've got about three inches of rise in that panel. Let me get a straight edge. And I'd say that's about uh, two and a half or so, maybe three. So that's pretty good. We'll induce our edge roll in. We'll clamp that on and we'll measure down to the wire here, approximately where the wire's going. And it needs about four and a half inches for that to lay down. That four and a half inches lays down by shrinking more of this edge and stretching right here. If you stretch right here, that lays down. If you shrink here, that lays down. If you do a little bit of both, that lays down. So it should be about the same on the bottom here. Yeah, it's about four and a half here. So. I call this the seesaw. We, we've got to go down four and a half inches both, both ways. And now we have a benchmark. So we do another series of shrinks, wheel them out again, and then we'll find that we had maybe one or two inches of improvement here in the next cycle. So it might take four cycles, maybe five cycles. If you're really, really good, maybe you're lucky and you get it. depends on the shape, though. You can maybe get it in two or, two or three cycles, but this would probably take four or five cycles. All right, we're going to put some more gathers in here. You can go right over. The other ones are in between them. I like to go in between them initially. Looks like I need a little WD-40. All right, so we're going to knock these shrinks down again. Want to make sure we get air underneath them. Always watching right here. That's really coming over nicely. We'll crunch those down a little bit right here. See if we can reactivate them a little.
And see, now it's starting to get the, the roundness that we desire. Looking pretty good. We'll crunch those down now on the flat stump. Let's see what we have. We'll put in an arrangement here. And we'll lay it up to the buck. All right, we've done the second round of shrinking. And this is a more accurate way to, to measure our progress and essentially we've come in that far. We've done very little stretching. It's all mostly, I would say, 10-15% um, of stretch and all this progress so far has been all shrinking. Now we did the deep shrinks, but I think we'll do a whole series of, of uh, shallow sh uh, shrinks right now and then we'll see what that does. Right, Mark told me that uh, he didn't capture all my d uh, description of how to do these shrinks. So this is the third round of shrinks that we're doing. So I'm going to uh, describe it in detail exactly what I'm doing. So you want to have air underneath it. If you can have a little air gap under here, that helps out the shrinking process. And you're always watching this opening here, which initially you want to be about this angle here and if it goes up steep like that there's a potential for it to tip over you don't want that and if it if it as you're hammering it goes like this you lose the potential for shrinkage it just escapes you want it to do this so when you're hitting it it actually pushes the metal into itself like that and you get a linear stretch, a linear shrink rather. And the verification that you've done the work is there will be a hard spine. It's the collision of the metal into itself that develops a hard spine here and it discolors in the metal whether it's aluminum or copper or steel, whatever you're doing. You'll see that discoloration. It all comes out when you wheel it. So we start down here and we're just snapping the hammer and if we can tighten that up and there's that hard spine the whole way This one's pretty steep. I'm going to hit this over here first to settle it down because it was too steep.
Okay, so now let's see if I can reactivate them. Let's get that one down a little more. Now that one's a little dangerous because it's potentially can tip over on me, so I got to be careful with that one. Let's bring that one up on the, the flat here. that down. Now you can see the panel's getting a nice round to it. We can develop it a little more here before we wheel it again. On this side we don't want to capture any of those shrinks. We just hammer them down. And we can, we don't need as much this is the bottom of the panel. We don't need as much uh, curve. It's most of the curve is up here, so I'm going to put a lot more effort right up in here. Knock that stuff down. And this uh, shrinking facilitator is now a stretching facilitator, facilitator, the way we're working it. It's basically a hammer form and it'll do more for your panel work and faster than say just working on a beater bag to stretch out with. Because it's holding all the sides and uh, you can immediately take advantage of these spontaneous shrinks that happen over here. Now we'll bring it over to the uh, stump. You can see we're getting a pretty good curve there. Let's just hold it up here. You see it's coming around pretty good now. So we'll knock these down on the flat stump and then wheel it once more. So now we'll knock these all down before we put it in the wheel. This is uh, just an inexpensive Walmart hammer that I spent all the time to make this, but actually if you just take one and grind it all up, this will do the same, same deal. You don't have to reduce it so much. I think if I would just taken rounded that off, it would work the, the same way. And I'm just choked up on it. It's very simple. It's bouncing off pretty much. But it makes it a lot easier so you don't have to go so lumpy in the English wheel. Alright, now bring it over to the wheel and see what we got. Alright, so here we are. We're going to wheel this out. Pulling down to roll that edge over a little more. That's setting some of the arrangement. 
plus it's adding area at the same time. Now the panel, uh, a lot of the steel has uh, oil uh, in the pores of it and it comes out. So it needs to be washed really thorough and I gotta clean the wheels up. But we'll see how the panel is looking right now. And I don't want, again, I don't wanna make the videos too long. I know some people like it, but the majority uh, like quicker, shorter videos. So we'll make this into a two or three or four part to do this whole panel. So let's see what that says now when we offer it up to the wire form. All right, now we were, we're about to there. We got about three more inches to come down on that edge. Some of that's gonna be by shrinking and some of it's gonna be stretching. But we got a ways to go, probably two or three more rounds of shrinking and that edge will come right down. And I gotta get it all washed up. So I think we'll hold right there. But you can see we're getting that nice curve in here now. And the double curvature is almost there. We just gotta bring it in that much more. So I think that's it for tonight. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton. I wanna thank everybody for watching and uh, the great comments. Uh, keep them coming. And see you next week.